Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, I'll be test fitting the new powertrain that I have for the 89 Chevrolet S10. If you missed the last episode, I put a link in the description box below. I pulled out the original powertrain so I can start making room for swapping in a 350 small block V8, which is going to be a lot of fun. But of course, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done before I can put the engine and trans in for the final time. I need to finish restoring the frame, undercoat the body, rebuild the front suspension, rebuild the steering, redo the wires, blah, blah, blah. It's a long list, but I don't want to be doing all of that stuff and then test fit the powertrain and risk messing something up. So we're gonna go ahead and get the engine and transmission in the truck, figure out clearance, make sure everything is gonna work like it should, and you know, go from there. As far as fitment, I do have a few concerns. Concern number one involves the stock oil pan. So because my S10 is two wheel drive, according to my research, this stock oil pan should work perfectly fine. The thing we have to watch out for is clearance with the front cross member. The only times that you really should run into problems when doing a swap like this is four wheel drive models because you have that large front differential. In those cases, you would either need to somehow modify the stock oil pan or actually find a company that makes a dedicated swap oil pan that has a lot more clearance up front. My second concern is with the radiator. So I am gonna be running a Corvette radiator, which I'll show you a little bit later in the video, as well as a pair of electric fans. Now, problem number one is this water pump because this is what's known as the tall water pump. It sticks out a lot further from the engine than the short water pump. So that's gonna get replaced. I also have a different harmonic balancer because as I've talked about in previous videos, the entire accessory drive off of the 4.3 V6 that I pulled out of the truck will bolt on to the 350. So instead of using the old style tensioners and the V-belt system, there will be one serpentine belt with an automatic belt tensioner. So it's gonna be a nice setup. That being said, I still need to make sure there's proper clearance between the short water pump and the fans. The last major concern I have is with the HEI distributor that I plan on running. HEIs are really nice because they incorporate the ignition coil on top of the distributor cap. They also have a built-in control module and a magnetic pickup to eliminate ignition points. So overall, it's a pretty simple setup. When it's all hooked together, the engine can basically run off of just a couple wires, which is just fantastic. But the problem with doing an HEI distributor is the size. They're really big, so more times than not, you're gonna run into clearance problems with the top portion of the firewall right there. So we'll check that as we get there, but worst case scenario, I'll have to ditch the HEI and use a more traditional distributor setup, but I got my fingers crossed. Before we get started, I'd like to extend a special thanks to O'Reilly Auto Parts for supporting what I love to do. It truly means a lot. If you guys have some work to do on your own vehicles and are in need of some parts, check out O'ReillyAuto.com and take advantage of the exclusive discount code SOBKYLE20, which gets you 20% off of purchases of $100 or more. I put a link in the description box below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. A lot of the clearance problems I could be facing really just boil down to where the engine is mounted. Now, there are a number of companies out there that make S10 V8 swap parts. I ended up getting my motor mount relocation kit from JTR Stealth Conversions. They make some really high quality parts. What's unique about these supposedly is that they'll offset the engine a little bit more towards the passenger side and lower it a little bit, which gives you extra clearance for a handful of things and is supposed to improve driveline angles. So it'll be interesting to see how everything fits once it's all in. In case you're wondering what the slotted holes are for, that's your adjustability. So you have adjustability in a whole bunch of different directions so you can get the engine sitting exactly where you want it. This specific kit uses S10 2.8 V6 motor mounts. All right, let's get the engine off the stand and hook up the transmission. Okay. 
just ran into my first major problem. Here I was thinking, man, this is gonna be so easy. These plates that I have to remove, they're only held in by three bolts. How hard could that be? Well, instead of there being threaded holes in the frame for them to screw into, there are nuts on the back side, in the frame, where there are no access holes to get to those nuts. So it is impossible for me to remove those without taking the whole suspension out. You have got to be kidding me. No way to get in from the bottom? No way to get in from the top? No way from the back? And no way in the front? I mean, I guess if you were just changing the plates or whatever, you can get away with just removing the coil spring and the lower control arm, but I need to remove the whole suspension anyway for the rebuild, so I guess I'm gonna go ahead and start that video. Much better. This is what I was talking about. The top bolt for those motor mount plates is in a little recess within the spring pocket, the shadow's blocking it, but stick a socket up in there to hold it in place. The other two are accessed from the lower control arm hole. At the end of the day, there is more than one way to go about doing this. While taking out the suspension is a lot of work to just take the motor mount plates out, I think it is the most straightforward because of how easy it is to access those nuts once the springs and the control arms are out of the way, especially if you already have to do suspension rebuilding or if you want to lower a truck, it's just a no-brainer. But I really don't think GM ever, GM ever really <laughs> intended for those plates to come out, so I think probably the people who are gonna have that problem are people doing engine swaps. So it's like one of my friends always says, custom cars, custom problems. Of course, I did film the complete front suspension teardown, but I'll be saving that for the next video. I'll not only be rebuilding the suspension from scratch, but I'll be installing the rest of my lowering equipment, restoring the rest of the frame, changing body bushings, all sorts of good stuff. But now I'm gonna go ahead and drop the factory transmission cross member. The reason why I took out the original cross member is because I have a new one to go in its place. This one allows you to easily run true dual exhaust. You see on the original one towards the driver's side it's down low because the original setup had a white pipe and the muffler and everything came out through the passenger side. Plus, sometimes depending on which powertrain combination you're going with, you would actually need to modify the factory cross member, not even talking about the exhaust, but just where the transmission is going to sit. Sometimes you need to relocate these holes or elongate them. Same thing with the transmission uh, mount right there. But this thing has tons of adjustability in the middle and across the side, so I can get this transmission exactly where I want it. The company that makes this is called G-Force, and I think it's very well worth it. It comes with detailed instructions and all brand new hardware with a variety of adapter plates, again, depending on your powertrain combination, so you can get everything exactly how it needs to be. All right, that's temporarily set up in there. Now I'm gonna tackle the motor mounts. JTR Stealth Conversions also offers this S10 V8 conversion manual that is honestly pretty helpful. It's got a lot of really insightful information in it. For example, I didn't know this, but the motor mounts for the 2.8 V6 are actually quite a bit stiffer than the mounts used on the 4.3 V6. The reason being is that the 4.3 is a 90 degree V6. 
the 2.8 is a 60 degree V6. So naturally, the 4.3 is gonna vibrate a little bit more. So it's gotta have softer motor mounts to help quell those vibrations. If you look in this little comparison thing right here too, you can see how the 2.8 is completely encased in metal. So it's very stiff. The 4.3, this is the style that was on the engine I pulled from the truck. It's just rubber bonded to metal, so it's gonna flex back and forth. So if you use these with the V8, it could actually rock a little too much. And being that there's already kind of tight clearance to begin with, you don't wanna risk it rocking and hitting something. Also, the 4.3 motor mounts actually sit the engine about a half inch too high. The 2.8 mounts with this kit sits it a bit lower. So again, helping improve clearance. I'm not sure if I'm doing this right or not. This is a total learning experience. I have the motor mount adapter plate bolted on the driver's side. I have it in the lowest height position. There's some adjustability there, but I need to get the passenger side one on first and then drop the engine down and figure out the angles from there. I do know on the passenger one, you need to cut off these little tabs so you have the proper adjustability left and right. I also had to bend a couple small tabs near those bottom bolts so the plate will sit down fully. Now for the moment of truth. Let's get the engine off the stand, hook it to the crane, and see how it fits. This is so exciting. I've got two bolts already in. I need to raise the back of the engine up a little bit to line up the rest of the holes, but it's almost there. I've got the engine loosely bolted in place so I can show you all of the adjustability that you can do with these motor mount adapter plates. With the various elongated holes, I can move the engine left, right, forward, and backward to figure out ideal positioning. All of it is gonna do with the amount of clearance between you know, firewall components, steering shaft, radiator, and all of that good stuff. And of course, it depends on what kind of transmission that you're running. There's a lot of different factors. Point being, you can pretty much make anything work. I know I still have to swap out that water pump, but let's go ahead and hoist the core support onto the frame and start seeing how that fits. For the moment, I went ahead and put the engine as far forward as I can go because apparently this position keeps the transmission as close to stock placement as possible. Now, there's gonna be some adjustability in there. Thankfully, I got the adjustability with the cross member. You know, there's a little bit of wiggle room with the drive shaft, but I don't want to have to modify my drive shaft. I still may have to move this back just a little bit. I'm not 100% sure yet, but just quickly looking over everything, I've already noticed, uh, you know, a few little clearance problems. I'm actually really surprised with how good the stock oil pan fits in this truck. However, I am touching the cross member on this corner. I might be able to rotate the engine a little bit clockwise looking at it from the back and I could probably move it back like half an inch or so. But if I move it back too far, I might need to hammer back that little lip 
in the top of the transmission tunnel. And again, I gotta keep in mind the drive shaft length. So it's just gonna involve some playing around. I also noticed back there, if I push the engine too far back, the top of the valve cover actually hits the heater box or whatever you call that cover back there. I'm pretty sure the valve covers on this engine are taller than stock, so there's that. But there is a solution and I already prepared for it. Holly actually makes a replacement cover for these trucks. They sell it with all of their LS swap equipment, but it has extra clearance in that corner. So it does work as a factory replacement if yours gets damaged or if you just need extra clearance like I do. Now I'm gonna go ahead and swap out that water pump so I can check radiator clearance. Well, I am totally wrong. This may be the tall water pump like I was talking about earlier in the video, but I had thought I had ordered a short pump, but it's the same size. So we're going to put the other one back in and put the radiator and fans in anyway and see if they clear. The radiator and fan setup definitely looks really cool, but there is no way it's going to fit with how I have everything laid out at the moment. I need to check out different water pump options. I know there are short pumps out there, but I don't know if they're going to work with the serpentine system or the accessory drive that I plan on using. The engine might also need to be slid back a little bit. I'm not sure. The thing is, you could mount the radiator where the AC condenser is in the core support so you would effectively make a tuck setup, but I don't want to do that. I want to keep air. So I know that there's a solution somewhere. I'm just gonna have to go back and do some research. That's okay though, because there's still a few more things I want to test fit, like the new transmission. I'll admit this is probably one of the more excessive purchases I've made for the truck so far, but I think it's going to be well worth it in the long run. This is a 700 R4 four-speed automatic transmission built by a company called TCI. It should handle a lot more power than this truck will ever make, and with the beefed up internals it should also offer far improved shift characteristics over the original 700R4 that was paired with the 4.3 liter V6. Now, according to my research, you shouldn't run that transmission with the V8. Apparently, the internals are just different enough that that transmission will excessively slip and fail not too long after that. Whether that's true in real world instances, I'm not sure. If any of you have experience with that, please feel free to comment below. But in what I'm wanting to achieve with this truck, it just wasn't worth finding that out later on. So I decided to go ahead and bite the bullet, go overkill at the beginning, and just be done with it. A couple other popular transmission options for S10 V8 swaps is the Turbo 350 and the Turbo 400. But what's really nice about sticking with a 700 R4 is that you have the luxury of overdrive. So you do get slightly improved fuel economy. Not that that is a big concern with V8 swaps anyway, but it's still true. And unlike the 4L60E, the 700 R4 is not electronically controlled. I think it's about time to finally unwrap this thing. Wow, this thing looks awesome. It's got like a dark gray finish on it. I don't know if that's paint or powder coat, but it looks really, really cool. Now let's try to get it in the truck. trying to get the light down there so hopefully you can see what I'm talking about but there seems to be plenty of clearance for the transmission with the engine all the way forward 
The closest point between the transmission and that little lip in the firewall is at the very top and there's still probably about a half inch of space, so I'm happy with that. If I have to move the engine back a little bit, that's definitely going to change and you know, it's probably best to be on the safe side and just bend that lip back a little bit just to give a little extra clearance. After all that, I decided to take a break and really look the truck over and see where I'm at and try to formulate a plan going forward. I went ahead and also put together the last little bit of parts that I wanted to test fit. And of course, there's plenty of clearance problems, but that's to be expected. The 350 is a larger motor than the 4.3, so you just got, you know, a little bit of extra finagling to do. But the biggest problem is the core support. I gotta figure that out. I may take one of my spare core supports off of one of my parts trucks, cut it up a little bit and see if there's any way I can make some extra room to tuck the condenser and the radiator a little bit more forward to maybe make it work. I'm honestly not sure. Again, this is a total learning experience, but I'm definitely up for the challenge. In case anybody was wondering, I went with Sanderson headers that are specific for S10 350 swaps. As you can see, the pipes are designed so the steering shaft can go in between them. So the factory steering shaft works perfectly fine. I pulled the dipstick out to make it easier to slide the header back there. You really can't do it otherwise. And I had to move these brake lines a little bit out of the way because these pipes do come out quite a bit. I have some more tweaking and stuff obviously to do, but it all fits at least. I'm actually going to be swapping out the steering shaft for this replacement one that's typically used for LS swaps, but it, it can work with any application. It eliminates the rag joint, which if you've ever changed one of those, it is not necessarily the most fun thing. So this is more direct. It actually should improve steering feel, I think, but it doesn't have any of the rubber pieces across the middle, which they're going to be close to the headers anyway, so that's probably a pretty good thing. So. I'm excited about that. I actually got the HEI distributor fitted too. I was pretty surprised. I had to put the shaft first and then the cap on top. It made it a little bit easier. I also had to move a couple wire harnesses out of the way. I'm not 100% sure still if it's going to end up being the end all be all, but you know, I'll dive a little bit more into it. But initial looks are pretty positive. The passenger side header seems to fit pretty good. It does get a little tight towards the back. I might have to modify that firewall a little bit and it's gonna be a little difficult trying to design that exhaust, but you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Well, before I close the video out, I decided to go even further into figuring out the fan clearance problem, and I think I've come up with a solution. I want to give a big thanks to a lot of the folks on the Hardcore S10 Facebook page who took their time and gave me some fantastic ideas to think over, and I'm pretty sure this one is the way to go. So this is a Corvette aluminum short style water pump specifically from a 1986 model. So it's a little over an inch shorter than the water pump that was on here before. It's of course lighter weight because the other one was an iron pump, but as you can see, without modifying anything, I was able to get the fan shroud dropped in. So once I make more clearance in the core support to tuck the radiator and condenser back a little bit more, I think I'm gonna have plenty of clearance for the other pulleys and the belt I know I'm going to have to modify the AC compressor bracket to be able to fit the hose through it and I might have to do something with that uh, heater hose fitting on top of the uh, uh, water pump right there. But you know, of course, I'll keep you guys up to date how everything goes. I'm pretty sure this is going to work out just fine. I'm really excited. If all of this works out like I hope it will, I of course will film a video on this whole process. I'll modify the core support tuck all of that stuff, install the water pump, the pulley that I have on order. I'll talk about part numbers and all of that. So if you're doing something similar on your truck, I will hopefully be able to provide some insight to you guys. Well, everyone, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed. Please don't forget to leave a like below. It really helps the video a lot. This video was a little bit longer, but as you can tell, there was a lot of stuff to talk about. And of course, there's a whole lot of stuff to still figure out. So if any of you have any feedback and suggestions on you know, helping me 
navigate through this project, feel free to post in the comments below. I really appreciate it. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so because there's a lot more content where that came from. A big thanks once again to O'Reilly Auto Parts for all of their support. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.